You probably do this every day. Snap a picture with your mobile phone, either email it or post it somewhere. But with that simple act, people can figure out your name, your phone number, even where you live, even if that photograph is nothing more than a picture of a plate of food. And that's because, unless you're careful, much of the information is stored inside the photograph. So how can you protect yourself? To find out, we've reached Mike Legary, who's Chief Strategy Officer at Securus Incorporated. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. So just how does this work? So essentially what happens is when you take a photo using an iPhone or other type of uh, camera nowadays, often there's GPS data embedded in the system. So the, the iPhone, for example, has location services, and if they're turned on, will embed the GPS data into the photo. So that way when anyone views that photo, you can see where it was taken uh, exactly. Okay, but when I look at a photograph like that, that information doesn't come up. What does it take to get that info? You know, what ends up happening is by default, when location services are turned on on your cell phone or your, your camera, uh, the, the picture has that embedded, and it's called um, EXIF uh, data. And you can actually uh, get a viewer online to pull that information out. Things like uh, Aperture or, or some different photo viewer applications online will let you see that data in the background. And then applications such as, um, as Facebook or uh, Instagram will use that location information as a starting point, a reference for how to tag it in their systems. Now, for obvious reasons, we're not giving out at this point the names of these programs, but they are easy to find, am I right? Yeah, absolutely. They're, this is a standard thing that's that's embedded in the technology for called the right reasons. So every package you can download from the internet regarding photo management now has this option embedded in it. Okay. Now we asked you to get in touch with a Winnipeg or track down a Winnipegger actually uh, using this technology. And can you tell me how that worked? Yeah, so, you know, the the way this data is used nowadays and is shared is, is becoming more limited, thankfully. But often what ends up happening is when somebody posts something online, uh, there's a number of ways of putting that image onto the Internet. And some services like Facebook and Instagram now will filter this data more regularly. But in this case, uh, I was able to find a local blog where uh, the individual had shared a photo directly from her camera. And unknowingly, she ended up sharing uh, her, her personal address from that, that information. And all I had to do is look at the photo and, and up popped her, uh, her house in the, uh, in the picture. Now, her name is Lisa, and uh, we did want to call her and talk to her about what we found. Now, she's told me that she's very public online. She does run a popular blog called Imperfectly Balanced. So she did realize that her information was relatively easy to find. But when I asked her about what she thought about the embedded information... Here's what she had to say. Oh, I think it's a terrible thing. I think people need to be educated on it. Um, if, if you have that expectation of privacy and you, you don't realize and you put a picture up of your child and all of a sudden the wrong person can, you know, narrow it down to where their bedroom is in the house, it's terrifying. Um, you know, I don't really know that there's any way to prevent it other than completely disconnecting. Uh, I think it's more of an education standpoint. You need to let your kids know you need to talk to your friends and you really need to know what you're putting out there and what the ramifications could be. But other than uh, logging off completely, I don't think there's a way to prevent it. So how easy was it for you to find her information? Uh, unfortunately, quite easy. And, and what it had to do with it is the way she uploaded the file. Now, thankfully, there's a, a lot easier way of dealing with this problem than getting off the internet. And that includes making sure that when you upload your pictures to services such as Facebook and Instagram or the next new service that comes out next month, uh, validate that the, the, the photo that's being presented online doesn't have the data. And it, it's something as simple as looking for an XIF viewer online and, and, and looking at your profile, looking at the information you shared, and seeing if it comes up. But you can also uh, but, set, set a, a setting on your smartphone to prevent that too. Yes. What's that? Yeah, so whenever possible, um, turn off location services. Uh, specifically uh, on the new uh, Samsung Galaxy S4, you can actually limit location services by application. So you can actually filter just uh, location information for your photos. On the iPhone right now, you still need to disable it overall. So you won't be able to use navigation while you have it off, but you can turn it on and off as needed. And uh, I understand that there are already websites, such as Facebook, for example, that, that have taken measures to protect people from this sort of invasion. 
Yes. You know, in the last couple months, actually, there's been a lot of activity on online applications uh, filtering this data, you know, and um, the, the larger brands have been doing it for a while to become more consistent. There were some challenges away about how they were allowing photos be uploaded and what data be stored in their systems. And a lot of that has been resolved in the last uh, several months. The the challenge right now is that a lot of applications that use Facebook or use online systems that uh, where you take a picture in the app and then upload it into your uh, your other systems, they may or may not have uh, protection uh, around this and around location information. So you have to watch every application you're using and and what it's doing with your photo information. And essentially, the best thing you could do is make sure that that location service is not on your phone, so that information doesn't get out in the first place. Absolutely. Uh, I also wanted to ask you, because some people may be thinking out there, oh, so what if they can figure out where that photograph was taken at that particular time of the day? But with that information, what can you, what can you figure out? Well, uh, very quickly, there's a couple of key things. Um, you know, really, you can understand where a person was, who they were with. Uh, again, from the location, I can figure out phone numbers, other address information. Uh, it, it really ties you directly uh, to a, call it a, a habit of usage or a habit of location where I can now uh, come and see you in the real world. I can, I can sit there and watch your house. I can sit there and watch the school you're at and, and find more out about you. And so um, with each picture that gets put online, you're giving up a little bit more about who you are, where you go, and your, and your regular uh, habits, if you will. So it's not, one's not necessarily so important, but a dozen, a couple hundred over a couple of years builds a very striking profile around you. And that's the sort of thing that uh, not only uh, nefarious folks, but advertisers would be very interested in. You know, absolutely. That's a key thing here is when you look at privacy, it's not just the really negative things you have to be worried about, but more the innocuous things. And and advertisers are a great example where right now uh, when you look at things like Google, um, you know, Gmail and other types of, of free email services, when you upload pictures, they'll look for information about location to give you better ads. And of course, that's, uh, they're tailing for that. It's supposed to be a benefit to you, but really it's, it's an invasion of privacy that we need to start considering more. So it, it's happening, uh, again, not just for the bad guys, but uh, all types of people want to, to borrow this information from us. Well, Mike, I really appreciate your time this morning in helping us figure, figure out a little bit of what's going on. Absolutely. Mike Legary is the Chief Strategy Officer at Securus Incorporated.